Hey folks, this is David from Default Sound, and today I'm gonna talk a little bit about how you can create an aggregate audio device to get extra functionality using your audio outputs for MainStage. And then I'm also gonna talk a little bit about the metronome function that MainStage has and how you can make that uh, give you the most value. So we're gonna start off by creating an aggregate audio device. This is a fancy terminology for combining two audio interfaces or your audio interface and your built-in output on your MacBook to get extra outputs. This is really handy if you need to run a click but you run your stereo keys out of your interface and your interface only has two outputs. So you don't have to spend money on a four output interface. If all you need is click then it's totally fine to use the headphone output and all you have to do is create an audio aggregate device or aggregate audio device, sorry. So I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So the first thing you need to do is go up to your search tab and find audio MIDI setup. So I search for it, type it in, give that a double click, and it opens up like this. So you have two windows available, the audio devices window and the MIDI studio window. So it opened up to audio devices, but if it opened up to MIDI devices, we just click up on window and hit show audio devices. <clears throat> So today I have my little M-Audio mobile pre-USB interface connected. It's a two output interface. So if I was running stereo keys out of this, then I wouldn't have a way to run the click out without it also being in the house and you don't want click in the house. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the M-Audio interface with the headphone output within uh, my computer so that it shows up as a four output interface. All you need to do is, in audio devices, click this little plus button right here and select Create Aggregate Device. When you do that, your aggregate device is created right here and now you just simply choose which devices you want to be a part of the aggregate device. So I'm going to choose my built-in output and my mobile pre. And you can see as soon as you add those things, they show up right here as sub-devices. So I've got my built-in output and the mobile pre and you see they're differentiated by color so you can tell them apart so right now it shows I have two input channels on this device that's the two inputs on my mobile pre and I have four output channels that's left and right on my headphone output and then this front left and front right on my mobile pre now you can click and drag your sub devices around to change the order uh, if you're if you'd like your output one and two if you're gonna use that the most and it's your interface you're gonna to want to put that first so you don't have to manually switch all of your channel strips over to output three and four in main stage so you can just click and drag to switch up the order if you'd like so that everything's nice and simple so now you can see the output channels one and two are on my mobile pre interface and output three and four are left and right on the headphone output on my MacBook Pro. So now if you'd like to you can rename this aggregate device to keep it simple so we're just going to say main stage ag audio and you can see right there it says two in four out so it's all ready to go you can close sorry you can close that out and now we're going to click over to main stage <clears throat> And I have Sunday keys open here within main stage. You just go to preferences. And in audio preferences, you're going to change your audio output by clicking on this tab. And you can see right there is our aggregate audio device, main stage ag audio. So you just click on, oops, you just click on main stage ag audio or whatever you named your aggregate device and hit apply changes. And it'll take a second while main stage reloads everything with this new interface in mind. All right, now this has loaded up. We've got main stage ag audio as our audio output. So now you have four outputs available to you. So you could click on any patch and control click on the output and change it to output three and four if you'd like. And that would now come out of your headphone output or whatever you designated three and four in that aggregate device. There's not a lot of limits to how you can do this. You could combine an 8-output interface with an 8-output interface and have 16 outs total if you needed. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's not really a limit on it other than what your computer is able to handle. Uh, but this is a really handy way to add a couple extra outputs to your 2-output interface. So now let's talk about the metronome in main stage a little bit because oftentimes creating an aggregate device 
is just so that you can use the metronome. Um, so we go up to the concert level here and we scroll over and find the metronome channel strip right there. And you can see by default it's coming out of output one and two. So if I click metronome right now, then it's gonna send out of that interface. But that's where I have my keys going, so that's not what I want. So all you have to do is control click on output one and two and change that output to output three and four. Or if you'd like to only send it out the left or right side, you can go to mono and select one of those individual outputs. So if you were going to run the headphone out, you'd probably you'd want to get a splitter that's TRS eighth inch on one end and then dual mono quarter inch on the other end. Hosa makes a, a, a good version of this cable. You can find that stuff on Amazon. It's like six bucks, super cheap. And that's what you can do to get quarter inch to a direct box so that you can get it to front of house. So you probably are gonna to wanna to click either a mono output or you can do output three and four and then you can drag it hard left to send it only to three drag it hard right to send it only to four, however you want to do that. But that is a pretty straightforward process, and then you actually have another output available. So if you wanted to run ambient pads like the tonic drone section, you could change uh, this to output three and four, and then sum it to mono using the gain plugin. And then you could send that out of four and then you could send your click out of three if you'd like so you, you can give your sound person some more control over how that works so that's pretty handy um, for now I'm gonna move this back to three and four just so that it's in the center of the mix when we're listening here um, so the, the metronome plugin in main stage works whenever this play button is engaged main stage has a master play stop function uh, it's connected to the space bar on your on your keyboard, and you can also map an on-screen button to this play button if you like. And then there's this little metronome toggle. So you can see how when the metronome is turned on here and I hit play, the metronome just starts going. At the concert level, you have some control over the metronome function by clicking concert level and then in the inspector, going down to metronome. And you can see here, you can set the bar and the beat. Now the bar is the downbeat, so this is the note value that the one will have. So you can set it to be a higher or lower pitch, you can set it to be a louder or softer uh, velocity, whatever is useful to you, or if you don't want the bar accent, you can just deselect that and then it will just play straight quarter notes or whatever subdivision you set, and it will just play straight no accents every beat in the measure. I like to use these settings here so that the bar is a little bit louder and it's a little bit higher in pitch than the beat. It works well for my team, but your mileage may vary. You can click here if you want to open up the metronome. This is the Klopgeist plugin. It's Main Stage's default metronome plugin, and it is pretty straightforward. You can adjust the tuning, you can adjust the tonality, um, you can adjust the overall volume. And what I'd suggest doing is just running the metronome and making some tweaks to see how these different things affect the sound of the metronome. There's, there's quite a few tones you can get in here. Um, alternatively, you can also replace the Klopgeist plugin with any other plugin within main stage. So you just click on Klopgeist at the channel strip level and you could change it to Ultra Beat for example. So then you can see now it's triggering these notes because that's the notes I have set in here. So if I wanted to change this so it would trigger notes in my range here, you could do that pretty easily and then you could drag samples into the metrono uh, uh, into Ultra Beat to, to trigger whatever two specific samples you wanted to trigger. Uh, last option, if you're really picky about your uh, click tone, then you could create an EXS24 instrument. And you could go into edit mode and you could drop in two click samples and map them to whatever notes you have set up on your metronome. So right now you, you drop a sample on G4 and you drop a sample on D sharp 4 and then main stage would trigger those in tempo uh, in rhythm for you. So you, you do have a good bit of control 
Uh, it just takes a little bit of work if if the the main Klopfgeist plugin isn't doing it for you. Uh, I use Klopfgeist; it works fine. It's not super fancy or anything, but it gets the job done. Um, if you uh, need more than that, it's possible. It just takes a little bit more work. So now you've got the metronome set up. Say that you like how it sounds. So this is how uh, you can get this the uh, metronome set up how you'd like at the patch level. So you select the patch that is in your patch list and you want to set has time signature. This is where you can adjust how the metronome behaves. So we're, uh, say you're playing a song in 6-8, then you can change this to 6-8 and it will give you eighth notes and it will emphasize every sixth eighth note. So every downbeat will be once every six beats. Um, but 4-4 four, four is pretty standard. So you just want the time signature to be on to make sure you have the downbeat. And then you can set the tempo in advance if you'd like by just clicking on change tempo two and typing in whatever you'd like. And then when you change to that patch and you have the metronome running, it will automatically give you that tempo, whatever tempo you have preset. Or if you use the tap tempo, then it will adjust to that temp tempo as it is tapped in. So then you could create another patch and you could change any of this information so that your next song is locked in. And all you have to do is change patches while that metronome keeps running, or you can just toggle that play uh, globally within main stage when you get to the next song. So that's a little bit about using aggregate audio devices in main stage and using main stage's built-in metronome. I do this every weekend. I run it within Sunday Keys and it works great. So I can't recommend it enough. The, the built-in metronome is a really wonderful feature in main stage that adds even more value to the software. If you like this video, I hope that you'll like it, comment on it, share it, and follow me on social media at Default Sound on Facebook and Instagram. Also head over to my website, defaultsound.com, and sign up to be a Default Sound Insider. You can get my main stage starter kit for free, which is $150 value. You get some free patches, free tips and tricks, uh, access to the exclusive uh, Insider's email list, which is full of useful main stage and sound design tips and resources. So head over there and check that out. If you have any questions, you can comment on this video or you can send me an email, info at defaultsound.com. Thanks for watching.